Hi guys, Michael Go here, welcome back. Looking at continuing the previous video by processing the panorama in Photoshop. Initially I might look at cropping it down so it's a more manageable size. I think maybe something like a 16 to 10 ratio in terms of a an overall panorama. Just looking really to make sure I've got to maintain a form of balance within the actual image. Just trying to make sure I have roughly uh, an amount of comfort in terms of the space on either side. I like to make sure I've got a little bit of clearance as well, some separation from the edges. Initially that looks comfortable. I know there's a little bit of a gap down here. I don't really like doing, doing this too much, but I will just do a content aware fill on this section. In this case I feel that the image feels a little bit more weighted towards the left, that's because the larger pinnacles are to the left here, it keeps on going over this side, the moon is over on the left side slightly as well, and also there's nothing over this side that helps fill it out. What I do next is I, I like processing the sky separately to the land, so I've got Topaz remasks that I use. I'll bring the window down a little bit so you can see more of the actual window. Now with Topaz Remask it's quite literally a case of just painting over the the area for calculation and then just selecting an area to fill and just compute that Providing there's enough contrast between the, the, the two different components, it creates a mask fairly easily. I'll go, always go in and do some checking on this. I might do a color range to make sure that this area stays moving back into Photoshop what I tend to do is I just create two groups copy the mask over And all I do is invert it to basically have one group being the ground and one group being the sky. From here I actually just do a couple of quick layers, adjustment layers, so I'm quite happy to just do a curves layer. Something that looks fairly much of where I want the, mil uh, the Milky Way to be like. And then I'll do, um, in this instance, what I've been doing is I might actually brighten it up a little bit. And then I'll do a color balancing. And that's probably uh, about 70% of what I like doing for the sky. And then I'll do something for the, the foreground as well. And also color balancing. Usually that's the majority of what I would do, but I might actually just brighten up the layer a little bit as well because I'll do a little bit more adjustments to it in a moment. You can see that exaggerates the, sh the shadows a little bit more. Now if I want to make the Milky Way a little bit punchier, then typically what I'll do is I might just add another curves 
bring it up a little bit. And that might cause me to want to adjust the color balancing a little bit more. What I was like doing is basically by using, a, a, I suppose, a just additional adjustment layers. Well, you can actually see there's the effect of the uh, other adjustments there. In terms of the curve becomes a little bit more fractured. Is that it's pretty much non-destructive, so I can basically just change it back and forth and say, well, I'd like a little bit more of this or that. Just to a level which I which I feel more comfortable with. A lot of the time, it's basically just shifting the sliders left and right a little bit here and there, just until I'm comfortable with where it is. one's probably a little bit more than what I want but just reduce the uh, effect of it a little bit at this point I might uh, create another layer for a little bit more brightness just want to create a little bit of an uh, a effect of basically just highlighting the where it's coming from the moon a little bit more. So what I'll just do is I'll just do a, a gradient out of here. I'll just invert that. It's only a little bit of a minor effect, but you can see the difference. And then perhaps just as another layer just to to further accentuate the uh, I suppose the the light to dark I'll just do a different sort of gradient out here now of all those changes I just also have to be comfortable with how the color balancing has gone Again, saying that I prefer to create an additional adjustment layer just to make a few tweaks here and there. Might exaggerate the darkness a little bit more that way. And of course you can always vary the effects a little bit by just moving a slider back and forth as well. I'm just wanting to show again the uh, the effects of the, all those changes. Now just remembering that each image is a little bit different in terms of how we process it. Something else I've known to try after seeing this on a channel was actually putting in a black and white layer and using that as a luminosity layer. So you can actually directly change various elements in, in terms of how bright they are. Just showing some extremes. In this instance, I don't really feel it's warranted. It's 
So uh, at this point of time, the foreground is a little bit too dark. Uh, I want to exaggerate the shadows a little bit more. So what I'll do here is I will do another curves layer on top. So initially what I'll do is I want to increase the light parts a little bit more and I'll bring down the dark parts. So just the before and after. Next up I want to do a layer for the purposes of doing some noise control. Uh, and for this I'll use Topaz Denoise. I'm pretty easy in terms of using a lot of the default settings for Topaz Denoise. You can actually see if I use strong or stronger. You can still see some of the noise in the background. So it's a before and after. Even though I've gone to stronger, I'll actually be dialing down the opacity a bit. So what I'll do in this case is I'll dial it down to about, say, 70%. As I said, also, uh, I'd like to do some level of sharpening. Quite happy to just do a, a high pass filter on this. But again, I don't want to sharpen the sky, so what I'll do is I'll just use this as an overlay. Just I keep thinking to myself, hmm, do I do a little bit more? I'm just going to try experimenting with something. Oops. At this point of time, I'm going to import it into Lightroom. I think I might just flatten the image though before I do that. Just opening up the image again and taking it into the develop module and working out if I want to do any other uh, fine adjustments to the image. I don't really want to saturate it or increase the vibrance at this point of time. Using curves actually adds a lot of saturation as well. I don't want to change the color temperature any, any amount. quite like increasing the warmth just a little bit. this point of time do I want to crop it any more? So basically we can say well I've got a little bit too much empty space at the bottom so I'll bring it, uh, change it to a 16 by 9 and perhaps bring it in a little bit tighter That will offset the balancing issue just a tiny bit, I think. And 
and I'll apply a little bit of a vignette. Well that's pretty much what I do for the majority of the post-processing of the image. I must emphasize that I process each image a bit differently and I'm always changing and looking at ways to improve my processes. What I do next however is I do export it and have a look at it on a couple of different screens before I put it out there. I hope that this video has been a little bit useful to yourselves and I hope to do some more in the future. Cheers!